Hello everyone, my name is Satyam Shivaj and I am working as a legal intern with Lexus & Company. And in this video, we will discuss about free legal aid in India. Legal service in India includes providing free legal aid to all those weaker section of the society who fall within the purview of section 12 of Legal Service Authority Act 1987. It also entails creating a legal awareness by spreading legal literacy through legal awareness camps, print media, digital media or organizing lok adalats for the amicable settlement of dispute which are either pending or which are yet to be filed by the way of compromise. The preamble of the Indian constitution basically aims to secure the people for the Indian justice. Socio-economic and political. The art in article 21 of our constitution clearly says that every person has an equal right to life and liberty except according to the procedure established by law. State, the state shall secure that the operation of legal system promotes justice on the basis of equal opportunity and shall in particular provide free legal aid by suitable legislation or scheme or in any other way to ensure that opportunity for securing justice are not denied to any citizen by reason of economic and other disabilities. Article 39A of the Constitution It is a duty of the state to see that the legal system promotes justice on the basis of equal opportunity to all the citizens. It must therefore arrange to provide free legal aid to those who cannot access justice due to economic or other disabilities. Then there is section 304 of CRPC which says if the accused does not have sufficient means to engage a lawyer then the court must provide one for the defense of the accused at the expenses of the state. Now let's see what are the services offered by the legal service authority in India. First and foremost, foremost the payment of court and other processing fees will be paid by them. Moreover, the charges for preparing, drafting and filing any legal proceedings will also be entertained by them only. Then the third is the charges for legal practitioner or legal advisor will be paid by them. And the cost of obtaining degree, judgment, order and any such document relating to the legal proceedings will also be covered. Moreover, the cost of paperwork including printing, transaction, etc. will also be covered. Now let's see the duties of police and the court in this. The police must inform the nearest legal aid committee about the arrest of a person immediately, immediately after such arrest. The magistrate and session judge must inform every accused who appears before them and who is not represented by a lawyer on the account of his poverty or any indigence that he is entitled to free legal service at the cost of the state. And failure to provide free legal aid to nearly to needy accused unless he has refused it or would be would be vitalate to the trial. It may even result in setting aside a conviction in sentence. Then uh, let's see when can the legal service be rejected. In the case if the applicant has adequate means to access justice or he does not fulfill the eligibility criteria or has no merit in his application requiring a legal action. Then the next is the cases for which legal aid is not at all available. Cases in respect of defamation, malicious prosecution, contempt of court, perjury, etc. Then the second is proceeding relating to election. The third is cases where the fine has been imposed and not more than 250 rupees. Then the fourth is economic offenses and offenses against social law. Then the five is, fifth is the cases where the person seeking legal aid is not directly concerned with the proceeding and whose interest is not at all affected. Then let's see when can the legal service be withdrawn. The legal service committee can withdraw the service if the aid is obtained through misrepresentation or fraud. Second, if any material change occurs in the circumstances of the aided person. Third, if there is any misconduct, misbehavior or negligence on the part of the aided person. The fourth is if the aided person does not cooperate with the allotment with the allotted advocate. And the fifth is the aided person appoints another legal practitioner along with the one which has been provided by the state or if the aided person dies except in the civil cases where the proceeding will still go on then the uh, last is if the proceeding amount to 
misuse the process of law or any legal services. Then let's see who is entitled to this free legal aid. Any person who is a member of a scheduled caste or scheduled tribe. Any person belonging to scheduled caste, scheduled tribe, suffering from any natural calamities, individual workmen, children, insane people, handicapped person in, or in person in custody and those having annual income of less than 1 lakh rupees are entitled to get the free legal aid. Moreover, a victim of trafficking in human being, human being or beggar, any person who is disabled or uh, is mentally unstable, a woman or a child, a victim of mass disaster, ethnic violence, caste atrocity, flood drought, earthquake, etc. Uh, any industrial work, work woman or workman, if in custody, including the protective custody. Then the, let's see the role of judiciary. Judiciary has always been a major supporter and proponent of free legal aid in India. There are various judgments by the judiciary which has proven effective in the promoting the legal aid and all the programs. Let's start with the Husainar Khatun vs Home Secretary State of Bihar. In this case, the, it exposed the poor condition of the justice delivery system in the state of Bihar. It was held by Justice P. N. Bhagwati that the right to free legal service is an essential part of a reasonable, reasonable, fair and just trial. Procedure for a person who is accused of any offences and guaranteed by Article 39A and implicit in Article 21. Then the next is State of Haryana versus Darshana Devi. In this case, Honorable, Chief, uh, Honorable Justice Krishna Iyer held that no poor should be deprived of the justice market just because the court fee and refusal to apply the exemption provisions of Order 33 of CPC and extended its provision to extend claims tribunals. Then the next is Khatri vs State of Bihar. In this case, Honorable P. N. Bhagwati made it mandatory for the session just to inform the accused to their right to free legal aid. And if any such person is unable to hire a lawyer to or to defend due to poverty or indigence. Then the next is Sila Barze vs Union of India. In this case, it was held by the Honorable Court that it is the person fundamental right to have a speedy trial implicit in Article 21 of the Indian Constitution. Now let's take a look at the Legal Service Authorities Act 1987. Section 12 of the Act lays down the category of people who are entitled to get free legal aid under this Act. This Act also mentions the institutional framework of national, state, district and taluka level. That is the National Legal Service Authority. The National Legal Service Authority also known as NALSA, which it was formulated, which it formulates the policies and principle as well as framework frames effective economy schemes to make legal services under the act easily available. It also organizes legal aid camps, encourages people to settle dispute in Lokadalat, or undertakes and promote research in legal services. Then the next is State Legal Service Authority. Legal Service Authority Act made it mandatory for every state to have their state legal service authority with justice of high court at patron in chief. The state legal service authority implements the policies, rules, strategies of legal aid down by the NALSA. Then there is district level service authority. It is same as the state legal service authority which is which states that uh, every respective state have in each district the dis, uh, district level service authority which being the district judge as the chairman. The authority performs the function and rules laid down by the state legal service authorities and it also uh, supervises the act of the Taluka Law Legal Services Committee and other legal services taking around the district and organizing Lok Adalat. Then the next is Taluka Legal Service Committee. Taluk Legal Service Authority Committee. The Taluk Legal Service Committee is constituted by the state legal services which consists of senior most judicial officer as ex officio chairman. It supervises and coordinates the activities of the legal services taking place in Taluk and also organizing Lok Adalat. Then at last let's see Lok Adalat. Lok Adalat uh, is an alternative means of dispute resolution. The main aim, main aim of the Lok Adalat is to decrease the workload of the court and also to ensure the inexpensive speedy disposable of the case. Chapter 6 of the Legal Service Authority Act 1987 states that the provision related to the power of Lok Adalat 
and there are benefits of lok adalat such as there is no court fees required it is very amicable way of resolving dispute speedy disposal of cases and the parties are free to compromise or settle accordingly that is all for today's video thank you for watching